Shabbat Shalom. Thank you to all of you who reached out to me over this last week to see how I'm doing. As you most certainly remember, last Shabbat, a gun-wielding terrorist took hostage four members of Texas's congregation Beth Israel, seeking by force to negotiate for the release of someone convicted of attempted murder. Through tears of fear and sadness, I shared that one of the hostages, the synagogue's rabbi, is my longtime friend from high school youth group, from college, and even from rabbinical school, Charlie Citron Walker. That night, one week ago, I truly felt fear and sadness for my friend Charlie, for synagogue life in America, for the Jewish people. The last three times a gunman entered an American synagogue intent on doing damage, Jews were killed. Everyone knows of the two most recent, Pittsburgh and Poway. The first time, though, a gunman entered a synagogue intending to cause harm, at least as far as I know, was the murder of Rabbi Morris Adler, Zichron Olivracha, blessed memory, right here on this bima. Not a week goes by that I don't think about that tragedy, and I know that it continues with many of you, too. This week, however, in Colleyville, the ending saw the hostages running safely toward life and freedom. While it's in my nature to pronounce Nes Gadol Hayasham, a great miracle happened there, as it pertains to the hostages' release. The truth is that the hostages followed the security advice they received. Their rabbi maintained a calm demeanor. And then when the opportunity presented itself, my sometimes goofy, kind, sweet old buddy Charlie picked up a chair and threw it at the terrorist. This was not a miracle per se, but an incredible act of bravery and courage on the part of all the hostages. Indeed, my Shabbat ended last week abruptly with tears of sadness and fear upon hearing the news about Texas. Then staying up late and following the news closely, my night ended and my week began with relief and gratitude at hearing the news of their release. Now, though, and for the last several days, if you were to ask me how I'm feeling, the answer is, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry that a terrorist violated the sacred space of the synagogue on the sacred day of Shabbat and in the midst of the sacred moments of Shabbat prayer. I'm angry that it was my friend, Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker, who was placed in harm's way. And I'm angry that the gunman demanded to speak with another friend of mine, Rabbi Angela Bukdal of Central Synagogue. In so doing, she also became one of his hostages. I'm angry that this terrorist, believing the Jews are in control of everything, bought into the blatantly anti-Semitic trope of Jewish power, the oldest of conspiracy theories. And I'm angry that some people heard this anti-Semitic trope and yet refused to accept that this was an obvious act of anti-Semitism. I'm angry that we live in a society that tolerates conspiracy theories and weapon proliferation and does not do enough to treat mental illness, all of which contributed to last Saturday's attack and will lead to future ones as well. I'm angry. I'm angry that the forward, probably the leading Jewish journal in the country, chose to print the criticisms of one disgruntled former Beth Israel congregant and use those complaints to cast aspersions on my friend Charlie. I'm angry that in my cynicism, I question Rabbi Charlie's sanity in letting a downtrodden looking stranger into his synagogue. And I'm angry that terrorism has clearly robbed some of us of our ability to perform the mitzvah of hachnasat orchim, of welcoming strangers into our home. Though our hearts should be open, our doors must remain locked. I'm angry that here and in Israel, it feels as though at times I'm forced to, ch to choose between protecting my fellow Jews and living by Jewish values, a catch-22 in which I cannot simultaneously sustain Jews and sustain Judaism. I'm angry. I'm angry that another act of terrorism stokes the flames of fear about attending synagogue when we already have a pandemic accomplishing this task. Too many people are already afraid to come to shul. And I'm angry that the pandemic prevents us from calling a solidarity Shabbat, a hashtag no fear Shabbat, 
by asking that all Jews everywhere pick this Shabbat to attend in person. Because of the virus, is it safe to come together like that? We asked. I'm angry that this Shabbat in which we remember the giving of the Torah on Sinai, the pinnacle moment of biblical history, especially in its juxtaposition to slavery in Egypt, that this day in which we should be speaking about God's love for us and our love for God is overshadowed by the continued talk of anti-Semitism. I am angry. And Fiddler on the Roof, Tevye laments to God, I know, I know, we are your chosen people. But once in a while, can't you choose someone else? I'm angry that a grandchild of Holocaust survivors, I'm still talking about anti-Semitism. And I'm angry that Rebecca and I needed to make a plan years ago with our children on how we would respond in the event of a terrorist attack here in our second home of Sharat Tzedek. In what other faith group and in what other religions' houses of worship do parents need to have that conversation with their children? I am angry. But we've been down this road before, haven't we? I've given this anti-Semitism sermon how many times now? We know that we need to continue to invest heavily in security and how grateful we are, how grateful we are to our highly trained, competent, and caring security professionals, our friends who protect us week in and week out. We are grateful too that there is a free and democratic state of Israel with Jewish soldiers guarding Jewish people living in a Jewish state. We're grateful that in this country and in this day, law enforcement came to our side to help. We're grateful for the success of American Jews in this country and our acceptance here, so that when they convened a call for the Jewish community with high-level government officials, some of those governmental leaders were Jewish. We Jews must remember too, we must remember that self-preservation is a Jewish value, that Jewish security is a Jewish obligation, and that caring for the Jews first is a mitzvah from on high. We're family, and family takes care of family. Nevertheless, we know too that here in America, we are strengthened by our relationships with our non-Jewish friends and neighbors, and that we need to lean heavily on them right now because the Jewish community cannot free itself from anti-Semitism. We need the help of the good, decent Gentiles with whom we live. A prisoner cannot free himself from prison, the Talmud reminds us. And we know, despite our anger or our sadness or our fear, we know that Judaism demands of us far too important to surrender to the Jew haters or to surrender to our own human weaknesses. We know that Judaism is the antidote to 21st century injustice, and that Judaism offers a path to modern day meaning and profound purpose. We know that the world needs the Jews, and that Judaism offers to its faithful adherents a beautiful life, and it offers to its friends a blessed existence. So it is that this week of all weeks that we read in our Torah portion, Parashat Yitro, Vatem im shamoa tishmau bakoli, ushmartem et briti, vitem li sgula mikola amim. Now then, God proclaims through Moses, if you will obey me faithfully and keep my covenant, you shall be to me my treasured possession among all the peoples. Then God adds, indeed, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Batem tiuli mamlechet koanim vegoi kadosh. A midrash asks a question What does it mean to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation? The answer it gives is that for worse, but also for better. We Jews are not allowed to be like everyone else. Israel is compared to a sheep, the midrash explains. Just as a sheep, when one of its lambs is smitten, all of its lambs feel it. Then the Midrash adds, this is opposed to the other nations of the world. If one of them is killed, all of them rejoice in his downfall. Herein the Midrash reminds us that we Jews are given a gift, and it is a gift that we pass on from one generation to the next, 
the gift of peoplehood, the gift of community. Ours is the gift of family, one family, spread around the world but united in a unique mission to serve God with joy, to pursue justice, and to offer compassion, to do what is right and what is good in the eyes of the Lord. It is our mission to model the pursuit of truth, the practice of kindness, and the sanctity of holding differing opinions while giving even our opponents the benefit of the doubt. It is also our mission to remember that we were slaves in Egypt and therefore to ensure that the powerful do not take advantage of the vulnerable. It is our mission to remind the world as an orla goyim, as a light unto the nations, that yes, we are our brother's keeper and we are our sister's keeper too. If we continue in anger, in fear, then we will abdicate the obligations of our Judaism, our sacred responsibilities. If we continue in anger or we continue in fear, then we will undermine that for which our ancestors lived and that for which our ancestors died. Our mission is clear. And despite the pandemic and despite the conspiracy theories and despite the Jew hatred, we cannot let our mission become polluted by anger or interrupted by fear. Individually and as a people, we are commanded to love God. Individually and as a people, we are commanded to love our fellow Jews. Individually and as a people, we are commanded to love the strangers living among us. We are commanded to love through the anger and the fear and the sadness. We are commanded to love. You can even say it with me. We are commanded to love. One week after Colleyville, let us pray that Congregation Beth Israel and Jews everywhere should know a sense of healing and calm and let us actively partner together toward that end. In addition, as we celebrate today the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, May we remain resilient against the forces of nature and the evil of humanity that seek to inhibit the fulfillment of our mission. May we get past our anger and our fear in order to focus our energies instead on the light and on the love, on the justice and on the joy, on the humility and on the hope that are at the core of our faith and our family. Now then, if you will obey me faithfully and keep my covenant, God says, you shall be my treasured people among all the peoples. Indeed, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Let us today ground ourselves in our mission and renew our commitment to our sacred tasks. So it is that we pray, Adonai Oze Amo Yitain, Adonai Yivarechet Amo Vashalom. May God bless us with profound inner and outer strength. May God give us the strength to come together as community and as family. And may God bless us and Israel and wherever Jews may be with peace. And let us say together, Amen. And Shabbat Shalom.